Guys, what's going on? And happy Monday. Welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. Bringing to you today, Season 4, Episode 5. Guys, what is this about? This is about, of course, the questionnaire that I actually labeled in this very, very uh, description of my podcast. And you know what? While I was flying Bangkok Airways from Vientiane Lao back to Bangkok, I was reading this and I was like, oh my god. This is going to help a lot of people out there. So, of course, this questionnaire, which you can find in my blog if you don't want to, of course, listen to this and do the questionnaire yourself, just to evaluate and see how credible you are. See, I've been going over a lot of things in terms of seeing, behaving, and, of course, the course of credibility, but we first need to understand what's going on within us, okay? So there are, let's say, four parts to this. A possible 100 points. Each question is five points each, but now let me break this down, okay, because I'm going to have to tell you the two-part question, so let's look at it this way, number one, I'm going to say the negative, and then on the second part of number one, I'm going to say the positive, between these two are numbers one through five, okay, one, two, three, four, five, you're going to circle the number that you are more predisposed to, meaning If you are more to the left, which is the first part of number one, circle number one, the number two, three, and four is kind of in the middle. Number five is, of course, more toward the right. All right? So, again, this is all a point system. If you get five, that's actually very good. If you get a one, that's not very good. Okay, two, three, and four. Three, obviously, you fall in between. Four, more leaning towards the right, and two, leaning more towards the left. All right, so again, you guys can actually see this, of course, on the ArsenioBuckShow.com. Uh, that's, of course, my blog and whatnot. I forgot to send my content right of these questions. Hopefully, she could get it done today. It takes a lot of time off my hand. But anyways, you will be able to find this. You'll be able to see all of this. And so please, and I mean please, tune into that. And so let's dive right into this. There are, again, five parts, five possible questions, or I'm sorry, five questions for each one. And you're going to have to analyze yourself. I'm not going to talk about myself right off the back. I'm going to say the questions first. And then you guys can stop it after you get all of your questions. And then after that, that's when I'll talk about some of the categories that are are probably my traditional strengths and the categories that I'm actually suffering in. So here we go. Let's get right into this. This is part one. To the left. Obviously, part A, part B for both, uh, for number one. So there are two parts, okay? Numbers one, two, three, four, five. One is bad. That's going towards the part A question. Five is good or very good. That goes towards the part B question. So number one, I sometimes justify telling white lies, misrepresent people or situations, or spin the truth to get the results I want. Part B. At every level, I am thoroughly honest in my interactions with others. So, again, if you lean towards the first part of A, circle the one. If it's like, uh, a little bit, number two. If you fall in the middle, number three. If you're more towards the, you are, of course, very thorough with the interactions and trust with others, that's four or five. All right, you're going to have to tally this score at the end of this part one. So now, I'm going to continue all the way through. So again, one, two, three, four, five. And then there it is. So let's get into this. At times, there's a mismatch between what I think and what I say. Or between my actions and my values. It's part A, now part B. What I say and do is what I really think and feel. I consistently walk my talk. Going on to number three. I am not fully clear of my values. It's difficult for me to stand up for something when others disagree. Part B. I am clear on my values and courageous in standing up for them. Question number four. It's hard for me to acknowledge that someone else may be right. Or that there is additional information out there that may cause me to change my mind. Part B. I am genuinely open to the possibility 
of learning new ideas that may cause me to rethink issues or even redefine values. Fifth question. I have a difficult time setting and achieving personal goals or commitments. The part B. I am able to consistently make and keep my commitments to myself and to others. So that's part one. All right, tally up your score. We're going on to part two. If you need to press pause, listen again, go back, perfectly fine. Now, part two. I don't really care that much people... What? I, I, don't, I don't really care that much about people. Except those closest to me. It's hard for me to think about concerns outside of my challenges in life. Part B. I, genu I genuinely care about other people and I'm deeply concerned about the well-being of others. Number two. I don't think about, I don't think a lot about why I do what I do. I've rarely if ever, try to do deep interior work to improve my motives. Part B, I am consciously aware of my motives and I refine them to make sure that I'm doing the right things for the right reasons. Number three, in my dealings with others, I usually focus on getting what I want. Part B, I actively seek solutions that provide a win for everyone involved. Part 2. Question number 4. Based on my behavior, most people wouldn't necessarily think I had their best interests in mind. Other people can clearly tell by the things I do that I really do have their best interest in mind. So part A, based on my behavior, most people wouldn't necessarily think I had their best interest in mind. Part B, other people can clearly tell by the things I do that I really do have their best interest in mind. I'm sick of this I do, I do by the, all these short words are killing me. Okay, <laughs> part five. This, there's actually four parts, five questions each, 25 per, qu I'm sorry, five per question. That means 25 per part. 25 times four is 100. So we're finished with part two. Now, it's part three. I feel like I'm not really utilizing my talent in my current job. Part B. There is a high match between my talents and my opportunities in the work I'm doing. I love that. Number two. I have not gained the knowledge or fully developed the skills I need to really be effective at work. Part B, I have acquired the knowledge and mastered the skills required for my job. Number three, I seldom take time to improve my knowledge and skills at work or in any other area in my life. Part B, I relentlessly upgrade and increase my knowledge and skills in all the important areas of my life. Question four. I'm not really sure what my strengths are. I'm more focused on trying to improve in my areas of weakness. Part B. I've identified my strengths and my greatest focus is on using them effectively. Part five. At this point, I really don't know much about how to build trust. Part B. I know how to effectively establish, grow, Extend and restore trust, and I consciously work to make it happen. That is the end of part three. Now, last part, part number four. After this, I will do my own on Wednesday if you guys want to listen to that. All right, so this is the last part. So you guys can do this questionnaire. You can share it with everyone out there. And let's continue. Part four. Part A, I don't have a very good track record. My resume certainly won't knock anyone's socks off. Part B. My track record clearly gives others the confidence that I will achieve desired results. Number two. I focus my efforts on doing what I've been told to do. <laughs> Someone made me laugh. Part B. I focus my efforts on delivering results, not activities. 
Number three, when it comes to communicating my track record, either I don't say anything or I say too much and turn people off. Part B, I appropriately communicate my track record to others in a way that inspires confidence. Number four, I often fail to finish what I start. Part B, with rare exception, if I start something, I finish it. And the last question, I don't worry as much about how I get the results, just that I get them. And the part B, I consistently get results in ways that inspire trust. Now, guys, for each question, part A, part B, again, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, if you're more leaning towards the left side, part A, circle the one and two. If you're in the middle, the three. If you're more towards the part B question, or I'm sorry, the part B statement, circle the four or five. You're going to add all of them up. All right, and then after you add all of them up here, Stephen Covey says, uh, let's see here. He says, if your score is between 70 and 90, you may have a bit of credit, a, a, a bit of a credibility gap. All right, which basically, which, you know, it manifests itself. Lower self-trust, you know, and you don't inspire to trust others. If you scored anything under... Uh, oh my god, my language is all jacked up today. If you score anything under 70, you're likely having serious credibility problems, okay? And what we're going to do, of course, we're going to focus on these areas that aren't that good for you. Now, again, if your total score is between 90 and 100, you have high personal credibility. You got competency, you got character, you got everything, and it translates in your daily life, right? Right? And, of course, you produce positive outcomes and you inspire others. So, guys, tally up your scores and continue to join me on this journey. I'm going to talk about my scores, of course, on good old, what is it, Thursday's podcast. And we're going to see what areas I'm good at and what areas I'm not good at. So, guys, share this podcast. Do this a little questionnaire. Of course, this is for you guys. And let's see what your scores are. I'm your host, Arsenio. Stay tuned for my scores on Wednesday. Over and out.